Hello friends, welcome to the cool Vedas, that's Veda school. In the last video we saw how the Pandavas and Kunti had returned to Hastinapura after the demise of Pandu and Badri. Today, let's see what happens further in Hastinapura. This story is from Sambhava Parva in Adiparva. Let's listen along and find out more about it. So, after the Charanas of Shatashringa had disappeared from the very eyes of the citizens of Hastinapura, Dhritarashtra was the first one to come back to his senses. And after digesting the news of his younger brother's death, Dhritarashtra turned his attention to arrange for the final rites of his beloved brother. He turned to Vidura and said, O oh Vidura, conduct the funeral ceremonies of Pandu and of Madri also in proper royal style. For the benefit of their souls, distribute cattle, clothes, gems and diverse kinds of wealth, giving everyone as much as they ask for. Let Kutte perform the final rites of Madri, as and how that she pleases. Don't grieve for Pandu, O oh brother, for he lived as a worthy king and has died, leaving behind five heroic sons, equal to the Devas themselves. After hearing this, Vidura, in consultation with Bhishma, fixed upon a sacred spot for the funeral rites of Pandu. The family priest and Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras by thousands followed the deceased king, loudly wailing, O oh, prince, where have you gone, leaving us behind and making us alone and wretched forever? They wailed this way. Bhishma and Vidura and the Pandavas also all wept aloud. At last, they came to the banks of the Ganga. There they laid down the bodies of Pandu and Madri and conducted all the funeral rites. Once the funeral ceremonies were finished, in accordance to the direction of the priest, the Kaurava set fire to the dead bodies of the king and the queen, bringing lotuses, sandal paste and other fragrant substances to the pyre. Then, Seeing the bodies aflame, Kaushalya burst out, Oh, my son, my son, and fell down, senseless on the ground. And seeing her down, the citizens of Hastinapura began to wail from grief and affection for their king. Even the birds and other animals around were touched by the lamentations of Kunti. And Bhishma, the son of Shantanu, and the wise Vidura and all others who were there became inconsolable. Thus weeping, Bhishma, Vidura, Dhritarashtra, the Pandavas and the Kuru ladies all performed the funeral ceremony of the king and Madri. And when all this was over, the people themselves, filled with sorrow, began to console the young sons of Pandu. Young and old, all the citizens grieved on account of the sons of the king of King Pandu and passed twelve days in mourning with the weeping Pandavas. Then Bhishma and Kunti performed the Shraddha of the deceased Pandu and offered him Pinda. They then gave food to all assembled there and distributed land and other wealth to them. When the Shraddha had been thus performed, the great Vyasa, the great Veda Vyasa, seeing all the subjects sunk in grief, one day said to his mother Satyavati, He said, O oh mother, our days of happiness have gone by, and days of trouble are to come. From now on, sin will begin to increase day by day. The empire of the Kauravas will no longer thrive like before because of wrongs and oppressions that is going to be committed. You must go to the forest and devote yourself to contemplation through yoga. Henceforth, 
Society will be filled with deceit and drug. Good work will cease to exist. Do not witness the annihilation of your race in your old age, mother, said the prophetic Veda Vyasa to his beloved mother. Satyavati, hearing these words from her son, soon entered the apartments of her elder daughter-in-law, saying, O oh, Ambika, I hear that in consequence of the deeds of your grandsons, this Bharata dynasty and its subjects will perish. If you permit, I would go to the forest with Kausalya, who is grieving the loss of her son. Hearing this, Ambika too wanted to join them in the woods. So the queen mother, taking the permission of Bhishma, went to the forest with her two daughters-in-law and she then engaged in profound contemplation. And at the proper time, she left her body and ascended to the heavens. Thus, Satyavati had gone to the heavens. Thus, the life of a strong, decisive, level-headed, proud and loving woman in Mahabharata, Satyavati comes to an end. Satyavati, the fisherwoman born to the king Uparichara and the Apsara Adrika, but brought up in the fisherman's colony as the daughter of the fisherman chief. The woman who gave birth to Veda Vyasa from her union with Parashara in her maidenhood. The woman whose father's love for her was the sole reason for Bhishma to take the terrible Bhishma Kshapata. The loving queen of Shantanu who gave him two sons, Chitragada and Vichitravirya. The woman who not only lost her husband but also had to see the death of her two young sons. The woman who had to step up and take important actions which shaped up the future of the Kuru Vamsha. If not for her, the Kuru clan would have ended with the death of Vichitravirya. The woman, Das, who became responsible for the birth of the Tarashtra, Pandu and Vidura and thus for the Kuru lineage to continue. The woman who saw the glory of Guru Vamsha enhanced by Pandu's might but also lived to see his untimely death, the death of her grandson too. The woman who, had, who at last decided to leave her royal comforts and spend the remaining days of her life peacefully in the woods so as to avoid seeing the decline or the annihilation of her Kuru Vamsha. Satyavati, the strong, powerful, loving epitome of womanhood. Now, what do you think of Satyavati's life? Please let me know in the comment box below. See you soon with another story of Mahabharata. Please like, share and subscribe our channel for more Mahabharata stories. Do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you. Namaste.